Pluto, the god of death, rebirth, regeneration, crisis and conflict that create renewal, things that are torn down in order for new things to begin. And yeah, the god of the underworld and death and power and wealth is about to enter into a part of the sky in 2023, the Aquarian zone, March through to June, where he has not been for a very long time. And that would go back to 1778, just after the founding of the USA, the American Revolution, and more. We're going to talk about how this has looked in the past just briefly, but more importantly, I want to focus on you. I want to ask you how this will, I want to tell you how this will impact you based on your, not only your rising sign, which is going to be by far the most accurate, secondarily listen for sun and moon, but also in terms of your generation. You are born to a Pluto generation, and your generation will feel the impact of this life-transforming transit more than other generations. And I'm going to talk about the ones for whom this life-transforming passage will feel difficult, and the ones for whom it will feel um, completely wonderful. And I like, oh yeah, this is hard, but this is really, I'm really enjoying this process. Okay. Now, before we get going on you and whether your generation is getting a hard hit or lightly hit, you know, soft touch or heavy touch, we're also going to mention a little bit about the meanings of Pluto and what it could mean as it goes into Aquarius. Aquarius, the people, society, uh, sometimes invention, organization, science, um, a whole new world, brave new world energy. There's people power Pluto. Pluto is not just about death and like scary things and abusive things. Pluto is a power god. If you ever look at the chart of the powerfully wealthy, whether you like them or not, Pluto, yeah, it's in, in he's involved. Pluto, Jupiter, Pluto, Venus, you know, they're the vastly wealthy 1%. So wealth and power, um, traditionally, um, Pluto was considered to be a god of wealth, not just of, you know, Hades and the souls of the dead. So you want to think about this in the broad spectrum of where a new level of power and wealth will be entering your life and the world as a whole. You know, paradigm shifts are a big part of what Pluto does, and he can revolutionize the situation. So we're talking about Aquarius is about we, the people, the societal structures of society. And as Saturn was going through Aquarius for the last three years, we've been under a lot of rules, Saturn, rules and restrictions, Aquarius for the people because of the pandemic, because of lockdowns and other such things, even, um, you know, censorship on the internet and all that coming up now, et cetera. I'm recording this December 18, 2022. So um, the Elon Musk story with Twitter is just still ongoing about exposing how the government co-opted the social media to control the people's speech and that kind of Saturn control and we the people is exactly what that kind of stuff was about. That's getting ready to end. And then in March, what will happen is that that Pluto will tiptoe into the very early degrees, like just let me get a little taste of this zero degree kind of thing of Aquarius, where he will actually be ingressing um, on the March 23rd to June 11th period. Now he's going back again. He'll retrograde in that little window, March 23rd to June 11th. But for the world and for each of us in our own sky, we're going to get a taste a little sense of, a little flavor of what this can mean for us over 20 years, because Pluto will not leave Aquarius until 2044 for good. That's a long stay in this sign. And that's because Pluto takes 248 years to go around the sun or the zodiac. And in certain signs, he moves quickly like Scorpio. And in certain signs like Aquarius, he seems to take his damn sweet time. <laughs> Where was Pluto before this as well? He was in a Capricorn since 2008. We saw Occupy Wall Street, subloan prime scandal, a, a, a near a recession that followed. We saw um, things to do with um, expose, exposing power, corruption in power, because Pluto can expose what's hidden. And then we have Capricorn governmental systems of power, corporate systems of power, technocratic systems of power, all of these things Pluto is trying to disrupt and um, kind of reveal to us what is going on. When Pluto was in Capricorn back in the 1700s, not only was the American Revolution involved in breaking away from Europe or from England, but also there was an industrial revolution underway and things were invented to facilitate industry. So the capitalist industrial complex is a part of what emerged. 
things like the spinning wheel and the spinning Jenny, I think it was called, and spinning wheels for power and, you know, getting good industrial revolution vibes moving forward was a big part of what happened back in the day when Pluto was in Capricorn and back in the 17 um, hundreds. And now basically things that are established while Pluto's there can go further or they may not continue. So I'll give you an example. I said in my last video, go watch that one. I think you'll enjoy it. It's my All Signs 2022 overview for each sign with the top two things you must know about. And by the way, um, don't forget to hit my like button. Don't forget to subscribe and check out your sign below. You know, me telling you about general themes of the year ahead, you know, by sign on these videos is fine, but you can get a lot more detail in my All Signs bundle or just by your own sign. And I spent an hour or more, usually an hour, on your sign talking to you about all of the detailed things you need to know in the year ahead. And I, I sell it every year. It's one of the ways I make my living as an astrologer, but I give you the teasers and my teaser video is doing very well. It's quite popular. And I give you two or three things you need to know and then try to entice you to buy my all signs bundle. Cause you can listen for sun, moon, rising, stocking stuff it for friends and family at Christmas, right? Pass the PDF file on. So it's a PDF download, FYI, that gives you the links to the unlisted content on my YouTube channel. All right, let's get going and talk about, so I talked about where he was. He was exposing the corruption. Pluto and Capricorn can often be plagues if he encounters Saturn. Pluto and Capricorn encountered Saturn and Capricorn. It was part of the black plague, the, um, you know, the rat infestation bacteria back in the day. This is also, we had a pandemic called the um, <laughs> coronavirus, etc., And so that kind of era is ending. We can almost certainly say, I think safely to some degree that the era of the pandemic in which that's what Pluto finished strong with, uh, with his conjunction to Saturn in uh, December of 2019 and on, onward we went into pandemic land. So we can say goodbye to the pandemic plague story uh, for sure. We can say probably goodbye to some banking and, and systems to do with money. Um, so Cap Capricorn Pluto was a part of the crypto era. Uh, crypto Bitcoin per se was created just and, you know, became a thing just as Pluto went into Capricorn. It was created as a promise that we could get over like the con government control and centralized banking systems. Now it looks like there's going to be legislation in the new year to regulate cryptos, trade currency, tra trade platforms, and maybe currencies because of the FTX collapse. So we had, you know, the collapse of the subprime loan and the saving of the banks back in the day uh, when Pluto was in big trouble um, with Capricorn. We also see now that with the FTX collapse, there's probably going to be regulation of crypto and the promise of this kind of ledgerless, uh, decentralized currency may not actually come to pass the way it was intended. But because Pluto in Capricorn can be about money and stock markets and banking systems and currencies and wealth, um, those stories that have been churning through the collective are coming to a close. That's what I'm trying to say. And as we get ready for that era to end, and probably good riddance, I think a lot of us are thinking that, then as, as Pluto moves into Aquarius, people power, right? We, the people, have the power. That's what it can mean. It can also mean revolutions in science, big new ideas, the small things that become large and the large things that become small, an incidental scientific discovery changing our whole world. So, you know, when Galileo decided that we weren't the center of the universe or the solar system as Earth, that was a Pluto in Aquarius moment. So paradigms and shifts in science can happen that completely revolutionize how we see life and how we see ourselves in the cosmos. I would say too, that the idea here, this is kind of interesting. There's a, in my last video, I talked about new sources of power, new sources of energy that serve the people, Aquarius, gas and oil, um, and nuclear power especially aren't good for the people. Nuclear power is always at threat of an earthquake or a calamity that can contaminate the earth. Burying it is difficult and, and it doesn't support life on the planet to bury nuclear waste. And um, then we have you know oil and gas, which is really just basically a big game, a shell game, like you know uh, moving money around for the rich and powerful. But because we were basing our society around oil and gas, including currencies like the United States dollar, uh, went off the gold standard, and that was a big deal. The U.S. wasn't like basing its power when Nixon was around on how much gold they had saved up. 
it went instead toward what we now know as the petrodollar, which means as time evolved, the dollar's strength in the United States became tied to the buying and selling of oil and gas, especially through the Middle Eastern sales funnel. That's unhinging as we speak. Um, China and Russia have put side deals together with Saudi Arabia. Arabian, Saudi Arabia's, Arabia is ignoring the U.S. <laughs> the petrodollar, the standard by which the strength of the U.S. dollar was hinged was because people around the world could only buy petroleum through using the U.S. dollar. And that may not any be anymore be true. And so we're going to see the collapse of currencies. And I will predict there's going to be a dramatic downturn in the value of the US dollar. And so fortunately in 19, 2023, probably around May or June. Now, I don't want to depress you because there's more good than bad. So Pluto can power the people. And so one of the things that has been announced after I made my last recording was the US government said, because I said new energy sources, the US, I said free energy, quantum foam, but no, the US says we got fusion, cold fusion, which is way less polluting and can be way more sustainable. But I don't know that that's it. I think that's kind of like a red herring. That's still a part of the Pluto and Capricorn energy. Uh, I think it wants to be controlled by the same forces that control everything else. I think there's something new coming and I think it could be very much free energy, very much sound energy, Tesla energy, quantum phone, quantum physics breakthroughs. There's always these developments, but they're always squelched. I don't know if you know the story of Tesla, but he was in competition with Edison, but at first they collaborated, you know, the light bulb guy and electricity and Tesla had better ideas, but his ideas were hidden, squashed and quashed things that work better than what Edison was up to because yes, of the power structures. That's not a conspiracy. That's history. So bottom line is I feel like there is new energy sources coming for the world and March, April, May, June kind of thing. Well, March 23rd to June 11th, we may get a, like a glimmer of where that might come from. And lastly, because I'm not going to do a whole video about the world, I do want to get to you. And if you're listening live in my premiere, hit my like button. Um, I would say that in a lot of ways, what we are looking at here is maybe contact to do with other worlds. And that's kind of a bit of a weird outlier, but Saturn will eventually move in 2025 for a three-year stay in Aries. And Neptune will already will also do that in 2025. Neptune, Saturn, and Aries sextiling the energy of Pluto in Aquarius. To me, it's frontier building energy. And technically back in the day, for example, when the Spanish conquistadors were moving throughout South America, that was during the Pluto in Aquarius time frame in the 1500s. And you have to imagine what it would be like to be um, in North, be to be an indigenous person in South America and suddenly see these white bearded dudes coming across the water at you with a different language and a different everything and technology that's way bedazzling where you're at. And I think we as a humanity can have that same thing happen, like the frontiers and the shock and awe of contact with new people. And you know, Aquarius is a human symbol. There's only four zodiac signs that include bodies, okay? So there's the Virgo body of the Virgin, there's a half man, half centaur of Sagittarius. And of course there's Aquarius, which is the water bearer, which is a human form and Gemini, the two twins, which are human, which is why when Mars is in Gemini, we have humans fighting with humans, brothers against brothers, which we're having now with Ukraine, Russia war. And I'm sure there's gonna be more breakouts in the world, but nonetheless, I'm telling you that this is a human form. The water bearer looks like a person that has arms and legs what but it's actually sort of angelic as well in babylonian astrology but like or ancient astrology but what is the kind of paradigm shifting humanoid energy that we could encounter about there's been a lot of ufo disclosure coming out as uranus has moved through the sign of taurus for whatever reason like it's like breaking away and chipping away at the fixed and and the locked in stuff um, I still think Uranus and Taurus is going to reveal an underwater city or the under earth city. Well, Gobekli Tepe has been unearthed as well, but I mean more of that, what's underneath us, what history have we forgotten? Um, but what I would say is I feel, and I fit sense that the whole narrative is once Pluto goes into Aquarius and is in a broad 20 year, well, no, and until 2026 is squaring Uranus in Taurus. Well, then in 2025, track with me, Saturn and, and Neptune go into Aries. It's a perfect storm for, we are in a whole new frontier. This is like discovering a whole new continent we didn't know existed or being discovered by a continent we didn't know existed. So I have no idea what to say exactly, but it, it smacks to me a first contact with some other 
form of life, whether it's already been with us and it's crossing through a dimensional portal or whether it's on another planet, I have no idea. And that's one of my big predictions that I'm gonna do in my shocking seven predictions for 2023. But I thought I'd give you a taste. That video will be coming out shortly, uh, probably within a week of this one. Um, any broad thoughts I wanna say? Things like AI, artificial intelligence and robots, totally. Pluto could be an Aquarius because it's power for the people. Why would a robot be power for the people? Um, because it's going to do things that we don't want to do. That, that's also disempowering for the people. May you lead us to a universal income because you don't have to have a job anymore because the robots are doing it all. Lastly, not to worry anyone, but Pluto is death, Aquarius is people, society, death of society, maybe death of societal structures, like we move away from nationalism and, and transnationalism, or what do you call it, like a global globalism, and we move into like city states or nation states over the 20 years ahead. I know that sounds far-fetched, I know that, but already in Canada, like Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta are forming a league, you know what I mean? They want to do their thing. In the United States, like this Florida versus California, they may will be like enemies really so cultures forming collectives of power and it doesn't necessarily have to involve moving the the boundaries geographically and, and carving out new lines you know what i mean it doesn't have to be a geopolitical carve up but it could be because power grabs of land have happened before when Pluto's in Aquarius, like the conquistadors coming from Spain to invade the um, Incan Empire and stuff like that. But it can look maybe like economic um, alliances because now that we run on a virtual, almost a virtual economy, especially as we move more and more towards even virtual shopping and locality is less important, there may be the formation of alliances. Now there was such an alliance in, in ancient Europe and I forgot the name of it, um, where there was this kind of like, it's almost like saying sister cities, right? You know, when you're like, I live in Canada, but my sister city is in Sweden and my town has a sister town and all of that. It's almost like how, but I, that's probably too far-fetched. It's more like how more local communities will start to form power blocks within countries. That's a really interesting way of thinking about that. So in the United States, you could probably see the, you know, California type Pacific Northwest gathering forces where then you would see the deep South gathering its forces. Instead of having an actual war around geopolitical lines, it's more like economic power blocks of some sort forming. We the people power for the people. All right. Um, people rising up who are angry and want to transform and change society. Revolutions happen when Pluto is in Aquarius. Where will people be wanting to angrily and, and powerfully transform what wasn't working? Probably that 1% holds all the wealth <laughs> and it's time for that to end. Get ready for that in the next 20 years. Okay, let's get talking about you. This is my long intro to some general themes of what we're going to get a foretaste of. And then Pluto will move into Aquarius full time, game on, uh, down the pipeline in November of 2023. Or let me just check my dates for you guys. I had them written down. Hang on. Yeah, so basically, kind of like September of 24, 2024. Uh, there will be a retrogradation of Pluto. And then finally, Pluto goes back direct again and goes through um, the sign of um, brain come online, goes through the sign of uh, Aquarius. I think it's around November the 19th. And then we're game on until 2044. But there's this back and forth that goes on as Pluto retrogrades and seesaws. And last, 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 you know, that's zero degrees where he's starting his ingress of Aquarius. That's an important degree because that was where Saturn and Jupiter co-joined the great conjunction, the con conjunction of kings, ushering in a new air era for every 20 years, those two planets in their synodic cycle will join in air signs. And even though they tiptoed into a trial run in the eighties, this is the full blown, we do air for the next 200 years. And so it's the first major shift towards the air, which is ideas and science and, and thought and community and relatingness that was initiated by Saturn and Jupiter co-joining in on December 21st, 2020 in the sign of air. And then comes Pluto on that hot spot in the sky uh, in March and is like March, April. And he's like, okay, and what are we going to do with this new thing that we're doing this new air thing all right also made me think of like a, a a dyson i just had a vision of a dyson you know a dyson vacuum cleaner i don't know why it's like okay those are the most incredible suction of air you've ever seen um sometimes pluto in aquarius can look like 
um, you know, the people overthrowing or dominating over the control that they've been under. And therefore, I did say rebellion, but coup, coup d'etat, you know, dethroning of people in power. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Some of us don't mind that. Um, so keeping on, keeping on, let's keep talking. And uh, I'm going to do your sign. But before we do, I want to say this. If you're listening in the live, hit my like button. If you are new to my channel, um, please check my description box below for how to get in touch, how to have a reading, how to sign up for my 2023 All Signs Bundle. Listen for Sun, Moon and Rising for your in-depth forecast, one hour videos each, or just buy a la carte your, your rising sign if you know it, or your sun sign if you want. I mean, honestly, your rising sign is more accurate. And um, we're going to talk now about generations and then about signs. Okay, so Pluto moves through a sign slowly. He's a generational planet in the sense of his speed is very, very slow. Same as Neptune, same as Uranus. And those planetary slow movements mean that whole generations are born under the influence of this particular placement. So you do know then, therefore, the starting in 20, 2023 to 24, there's a generation who's born with their Pluto in the sign of Aquarius, okay? Okay. And if we look at the idea of relationships between the, the, the signs, right, Pluto and Leo generation is getting the most intensity when Pluto moves into Aquarius, because those are signs that are opposite each other. So they're really feeling intensely gripped by this new energy where they're going to be forced to confront some change they need to make and to paradigm shift their own realities in an intense way. So Leo rising in particular, you are going to feel, I'm not Leo rising, Leo generation, Leo generation, you're going to feel is who are the Leo, when roughly was the Leo generation? Because Pluto goes back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to give you dates, but if I give you the first date, 1937 for Leo and the last 1958, you're going to have to go check a, a ephemeris, go to astro.com. Ephemerises are free. See on your day and month was Pluto actually in Leo because he was back and forth in 1937 and 58. So you want to go look, but in general, 1937, tail end of the great depression to 19, 1958, just before the, the, you know, the, the fun 60s happened there as a whole generation born in that time. And you are the most intensely going to feel this. Now, technically, of course, the later ones, the 1958 people are going to feel it much later, like towards two, 2044, because you'll be in a direct Pluto opposition. Whereas the 1937 people are going to feel it right away when Pluto's in the zero degrees of Aquarius. So it's going to affect the later generations, like the, like the, the 58s and the 50s people, further down the line, but energetically more directly as you have a Pluto opposition going on, but most generally you still feel it. The whole sign feels this, oh, Pluto, Voldemort, Darth Vader, power, mafia boss energy across the way. <laughs> Second of all, the most second most difficult generation to experience this in terms of ah this is a little feel easy i'm not liking this is the scorpio pluto generation from 1983 to 1995 okay anyone born in that window that you know you want to hand them out some kind of love hugs and keep them happy for the next 20 years similar to what i just said anyone born in 1983 and i'll check your charts of course to see if it's true but the early you know the 83 to 85 people are going to feel this energy of March, April, you know, March 23rd to June the 11th taster more intensely than the 1995 crew, right? Because <laughs> that's later down the pipeline. And so that's going to be closer to later down Pluto's movement through Aquarius as he comes to the end of his 20 year story. But in the early 80s babies, like 83 to 86, you're getting a lot of intensity over the next two to three years as Pluto is forming a square from Aquarius to Scorpio, and you're having a Pluto, natal Pluto square, Pluto energy, a time of crisis and transformation, a time of big reveals about who and what you really are here to do and what your life is about. Okay, now this is just generational themes. I'm not looking at your chart, your ascendant, any of that. Just be aware, born in 83 to 895, there's going to be a Pluto square, Pluto event in your chart between now and 2044. 
or between next year and 2044. Okay, now who gets the flow? Who gets the love? Who gets the more easy energy? Libra generation, 1971 to 1984. Pluto was in Libra. That's you. That's your generation. Check the margins for 71 and 84 to make sure that's true for you. But nonetheless, you guys are getting a Pluto trine, which is to power up, man. Like I just think about like putting supersonic jets and battery power extras and something in your life is deeply powering up in a good way. And then lastly, because this is just general, you know, generational stories, the Sag generation of 1995, Pluto and Sag to 2008. That includes my daughter. <laughs> my son uh, is out, outside the bounds of any of these. Um, the other signs I'm not mentioning, I'm not mentioning for a reason. So, you know, um, I don't want to go, you know, no one was alive before 1937. So I'm, I'm starting back at the Leo generation, but also certain signs are what we call in aversion to the Aquarius story. And those signs that, that, you know, in the sky, you know, will be the signs of cancer. So I didn't talk about the cancer generation, but they're in the 1920s anyway. Um, I didn't talk about, um, well, the 20s, 30s. I didn't talk about the um, Virgo generation. That's me, Pluto and Virgo. That would be the people between 1958, you know, and 1971, because the Aquarius sign is an aversion or 150 degrees away from Pluto, where Pluto will be traveling, was traveling when you were born. These are too subtle to talk about. You could do soul work or something, but it's not like your real life. So Sagittarius, 1995 to 2008, Pluto people, sextile energy, very easy, very flowing. Uh, the Sagittarius Pluto generation, like my daughter, the 95 to 2008 people will actually not feel totally rattled. And when you think about transformation of technology in particular, where brand new forms of tech are coming out, like the Neuralink implant with uh, Elon Musk or the metaverse or augmented reality or transhumanism or whatever it is. It's sort of like adopting these new technologies and getting right on board for them and not even thinking twice. Who would that be? That would be the Sag generation, 1995 to 2008. And they're the ones who actually are sort of like, huh, Snapchat, I'm not too sure. They're not the big users of that tech, right? Compared to people born after 2008. So um, long story short, they will adopt whatever these powerful new life paradigm shifting science and tech developments are for the people. I think they're going to be rapid adopters. Okay. And so that's maybe why that sextile between Pluto natally powers them up to really feel quite good about some of the changes coming ahead. And again, 95, 1995, 96, 97 birth times feel the March to June energies of Pluto next year more. Okay. And as time goes on, right. Then like, at the end around 2000 and you know 40 to 44 then you're going to see the energy more in, intensely impacting people born closer to 2005 6 7 8 you see what i mean so got to parse your energy but all sages sage pluto people feel it all right so i hope that was useful to you to understand how your generation might feel about this new transit of pluto into a whole new place people power now, I probably found a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of notes that I've been making over the last few days. And I, I expect to see AI look like totally like normally like us, Turing test. You know, can't tell if this is an artificial intelligence or if it's a real person. Um, so that will probably definitely happen over the next 20 years with this Pluto and Aquarius. But the only reason I like it is Pluto's trying to power the people up. So maybe we don't all need to be doing drudgery jobs. Maybe there's going to be completely robotic garbage trucks, completely robotic what's it, uh, wastewater management things, uh, completely robotic. What do people hate to do? Dispensing of your McDonald's burger robots. These are not jobs people like. People enjoy their job. They enjoy the company, maybe the people they work with, but they don't enjoy the job. This is like, this is not, it's not a fun place to be. My favorite book, Ren Butler, The Archetypal Universe is amazing. I just want to briefly mention before I talk about your sign, Saturn Pluto energy. Why? Because Saturn will go into Aries in 2025, along with Neptune, pioneering, frontiering, carving out new territory, boldly going somewhere. Saturn can squash and restrict, by the way, uh, wars. Wars might calm down, etc. He might get serious and say, Enough of this warship. But Saturn Pluto, according to Ren, is powers of an. So Pluto will be in, right? In 2025, Pluto will be in Aquarius. That's in a sextile relationship to Aries, a flowing and positive relationship to the nature of Venus. 
Sat pos positive Saturn Pluto, things are powers of intense discipline and endurance, rock solid determination for, and persistence, the impulse to bear down with a concentrated force, deep and systemic self exploration. Now, this is a psychological approach, but I think we're going to have deep and systemic exploration of something, and likely it's space or inner space. And what do I mean by inner space? Well, if it's because outer space we get, right? It's like we discover once we get deep into neural links and or into um, augmented reality or simulation realities, um, something very fundamental about our inner world. Maybe we discover when we're there that there are non-ordinary, non-corporeal beings that we can connect with once we get into a certain state of consciousness that's available in artificial reality. These are just ideas, okay? But I do really feel that that's a lot of what frontiering, pioneering, adventuring, uh, you know, boldly go. You know that Star Trek thing with old Captain Kirk? To boldly go where no man has gone before. That is Saturn, Neptune in Aries sextile Pluto and Aquarius, courtesy of 2025 to 2024. Let's get talking about you. You've been so patient with me. Thank you. And I hope you listened and liked some of that. And if you're in the description, if you're in the chat room with me live, my crew is so cool. I love all you guys. Please hit my like button. Thank you so, so much. Um, I'm often running contests. I might run a contest for this. So I will see where, um, if I think it's going to be an important enough video, I ask people to jump into the chat and we have a big draw at the end. There probably is one going on for this. Uh, I'm recording December 18th. It goes to my Patreon community. And when I finally put it out to you guys, maybe on the 21st or 3rd or 4th of Christmas Eve, then maybe we'll have a big contest where we can come in and, and win a prize with me. All right. So let's talk a bit about your sign. Let me say this you're only getting like a fragrant whiff of what this is going to be about for you. And we want to listen to the rising sign. It's more accurate. So if you want to know what your rising sign is and you somehow don't know, you need a birth chart. To cast your birth chart, you go to my description box, get my freebie down there, tutorial, using free online software, and you need a birth time. And I'm teaching you how to cast it in the ancient house system of whole sign houses. I need to do videos on why whole sign houses work. I need to do a lot of educational stuff in 23. I'll get around to it. Um, okay, so let's go. Let's talk about the Aries people first. And I'm not going to show, there's no point, I don't think, in showing you a picture of the sky when all I'm showing you is a sign of Aries with Pluto sitting in it. So that doesn't make any sense. It makes sense when I'm doing shorter transits like moons, because then I'm showing you a particular piece of the sky that has to do with the, um, the way the moon is angling other planets, like new moons, full moons, all that stuff, but not this time. So I'm going to open up the sky. I'm on my back end of my software and put up the transit chart. So I am ready to talk to you about next year when Pluto goes into Aquarius on March the 23rd to June the 11th, giving us a really lovely teaser, like a trailer in a movie of what the heck this is really going to be about. Okay, that's the gist of that. And he does retrograde. So it's not like he gets very far into the narrative. He will retrograde at zero degrees of Aquarius, um, you know, shortly after, like in May. So don't, let me see when he retrogrades because I wasn't thinking about that. That's a whole video I, I will normally do, but um, it's a zero D. Yeah, so he's retrograding at the end of April um, at zero, zero Aquarius. So, you know, it's so tight to the zero, zero, right? It's just so like the inception, the beginning, the newness, the freshness of something. And I will be doing a whole video on this as it happens. So sign up for, notifications and hit the bell and please subscribe. Thank you. It's the subscriptions as well that really help the channel grow. And that is important. So if you're not subscribed and you come all the time to my channel, why aren't you subscribed? Please think of hitting the button and you know, you just get a notification and don't even always get a notification, but you can get a notification uh, that I'm going live or I'm doing a premiere or that I posted something new. Depends on your settings, but when you subscribe, I benefit. <laughs> Aries, sun, moon, and rising sign. For you, this story is about the energy of Pluto, the god of transformation and change, leaving your 10th house where he's been since of career and reputation, where he has been ever since 2008, and he is completing that story. I, as an Aries sun and moon, have to say, 
that my career path has dramatically changed since 2008, like dramatically. It was the beginning for me of what became my career in the online world, where I sold a product to tarot.com and it was getting residual income, was on a magazine editing gig, doing tons of big stuff, big magazines online, and eventually moving into astrology long and teaching classes online so everything about that transit of pluto through capricorn for me with my son which can be about career moon about home purpose but just the energy of a stellium and aries i have a lot of aries is a bit about a transformation of my career path and reputation path now that's ending right that's coming to its finish and now we have the experience of our 11th house being awakened and activated by Lord Pluto as he moves through our 11th house of good spirit, normally a very positive house. It's about your groups of friendships and the people that you wish to belong to and who you feel they belong to you. Like this, this is my tribe, the chosen friends, the chosen gatherings of people, you know, your affiliations by common ideals and goals, not the ones you're forced to have because you work with them or they're next door to you and you know you see them at the market. And this is also your, your overall ability to influence the masses. This is a house of the movement maker. Movement makers have a lot of planets that, you know, people who form movements, whether they're social movements whether they're you know political movements okay so you could become more involved in a movement or become the movement maker sometime in the next 20 years or so right until 2044 from starting so get the foretaste energy here a little flavor how do you feel like you're okay and powerful friends pluto in the 11th can bring you really powerful friends like suddenly your best friends with and the person is like, I don't know, depends on your industry, what you care about, like, you know, the top producer in Hollywood, or, you know, a, a, a famous, uh, an influential character, um, you know, it depends on what you consider powerful, but influencers are people who are powerful becoming your friend. And, uh, and you have people in power, um, giving you favors and benefits. So and who doesn't want that as an Aries? Like, so this is all very exciting, great gains financially derived directly from your 10th house of career. And I don't just mean a paycheck. I mean, like greater wealth, reputation and status can happen in the 11th and Pluto will power it up with wealth. And se secondly, Pluto is sextiling the um, ascendant sun or moon, send us more accurate, of Aries. So it's like focused, positive Pluto power to your identity, your body, your I amness. <laughs> I don't see any downside here, but you have friends die. Now that sounds terrible. I'm so sorry. I didn't mention this in my Pluto and Aquarius video, but death to the people I meant to say. Eek. Um, we'll talk about that in another video. I'm doing downer for you, Aries, but it has a mass die off basically. Uh, but um, but you are powered up. You are powerful. You have power coming to your identity and body and self through the movement of Pluto towards your ascendant. And this goes on and on and on until 2044. And of course, if you're an Aries in the first two or three degrees rising sign or sun and moon, you feel it the most. Okay. You feel it most powerfully because you are the early adopters of Pluto and Aquarius. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, and then later, like say you have a ascendant at 29 degrees of Aries, you get the most intensity down in 2040 to 44. Okay. All right. And I can't really predict micro details without your chart. So if you want to come for a reading, I can see, well, where Pluto's going through your 11th house. Who will he be communicating with over the next, you know, 20 years as he migrates through the 11th house of good spirit and opens up a gateway to other planets in your sky? You may find, lastly, that you have powerful new dreams and visions and goals because your life can be about that. Or if you have an eldest sibling, this person has power or unfortunately, Pluto, death. Now, death of an eldest sibling or power to or uh, from an eldest sibling will most likely, more likely apply to the early born Aries, sun and moon people. And that's not an older sibling, but the eldest sibling. Lastly, pennies from heaven and windfalls can happen through the 11th house energy. Pluto here is wealth and power. If you particularly have planets in your eighth house that receive Pluto in the first three degrees of Aquarius, in 23, 24, into 25, you may receive a chunk of inheritance that makes you vastly wealthy or some kind of chunk of windfall style money that really opens up more prosperity for you. All righty, let's keep rolling. The real point of this is to give you the teaser flavor. Without your natal chart in front of me, I can't give you the deep, deep dive that I could personally. 
don't forget to hit my like button and subscribe, especially if you're in my live premiere. I want to talk about you Tauruses having the experience of this passage of Pluto through Aquarius and mention how this is angular to you. This is Pluto squaring your identity from the 10th house of career and reputation. <sighs> having gone through this myself uh, energetically um, from my perspective as an Aries, sun and moon, um, I found it invigorating to say the least, but you're not gonna stay put in your career. So Taurus is your reputation can dramatically power up or power down. Your career path can dramatically change and, and not like dramatic, like shock and awe Uranus, more like regeneratively, like you're going to molt into a cocoon and then rebirth into something new and dramatic, sort of like metamorphos more to met metamorphosize your career. Or, you know, if, if you're like a snake in a skin that's too tight, Pluto can say shed the skin, your career skin's changing. Now, Pluto was in Capricorn, your ninth house of higher education, foreign lands, legal and court affairs. Like I know a, a Taurus rising person who had a lot of the last to 2008 of his life involving legal matters around something from a foreign shore. Sometimes these things are very literal, right? Sometimes they're not, sometimes they are. But Pluto moving through the 10th house is going to make sure that you are no longer doing the same job, career um, path. Very possibly, if you were in a perfect alignment before this with what you're here for and how you wish to express your career, you may actually power up to new levels of, of, of wealth, new levels of influence and power. Yes, that can happen. If your midheaven is in the 10th house, there's definitely more dramatic energy around changing your career. And what you say, oh, how can that be? The midheaven is the cusp of the 10th. No, it's not. Cast your chart in whole sign houses. Midheaven can float between the seventh house and the 12th house, depending on your latitude at the time of birth. Northern latitudes have extremely skewed charts in Placidus. So when you take it to whole sign houses, you'll watch where that high noon midheaven is angled. And if it's in your 10th house, right, then when Pluto is coming through there, your whole like vertical access to God, to heaven, to purpose, to the plot line of your life is getting Plutoed up, Plutoed up, <laughs> Pluto powered up. Um, Pluto squares your body. You know, Pluto is angular nine degrees to your sense of health and body and wellness and identity. Certainly Pluto can transform your identity. You know, I am blank. I am a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stewardess. I'm a politician, whatever. That can definitely change over the next 20 years. Foretaste in the beginning of the year, March, April, May, June, March 23rd. If you're a Taurus rising sun or moon in the first state, let's go five degrees of Taurus. With that zero degree Pluto this year in March 23rd to June 11th, you'll get the reverb, you'll feel it. So those early, early Taurus suns, early Taurus moons, you know, early Taurus um, ascendants feel this more strongly. Um, not to worry, but if you're looking for your moon sign, Taurus people, moon, uh, moon is mom. If you're looking for your sun sign, that's father or father figures or mother figures. Pluto squares can mean a death or an illness to those people. My mom passed away during a Pluto moon event. So just to say the better for, forewarned and forearmed, but on the other hand, your chart is not, it's individual and that may not be true for you, but just as a theme, it could be true for some Taurus sun people, dad, father figures, moon figures. Pluto squaring the moon, change of dramatic death and rebirth of career and purpose. Square the sun, dramatic death and rebirth and change in home and where you live. Again, mostly true for Taurus zero to five degrees, sun, moon, and rising. Pluto up here is in a inferior square to your marriage house. And therefore, for some of you over the next 20 years, it can be some dramatic changes in your marital status. And for those early born first five degree Taurus, sun, moon, and rising, your descendant will be in this first five degrees. And there also can be some serious changes or transformations in your significant relationships, particularly with business or partners or marriage like partners. Already, it's intense for you guys. You get ready, it's 20 years of Pluto square in you. <clears throat> Depends on your ascendant degree, especially, but it's not like a one and done. Okay, let's keep moving. Nothing is one and done with Pluto. That's why Pluto goes back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth between the signs, right? And it takes forever to get out completely of a sign. He wiggles in and out for his retrogrades. Um, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign people. Gemini's, first of all, the good news, 
Pluto is moving in a trine relationship to your identity. And especially in the first five degrees, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising, uh, 2023's ingress to 2026 even, you're getting a lot of love from Pluto. Um, and it's like, how are you going to be in a positive flowing, lucky and opportune way, more wealthy, more powerful, more solidly in, in command of your kingdom, of whatever that is. And don't forget, Pluto is the king of the underworld. He is a king like Zeus on Mount Olympus and Neptune in the ocean. So where are you kinging up into your power or queening up? Um, Pluto moves through your ninth house of courts and legal affairs over 20 years, your house of foreign shores and lands, book publishing, academia, study, religious and spiritual beliefs, faith, God, and temples. Did I forget? I think I caught it all. And in, in one of the Vedic astrology techniques, the house of the third marriage. So possibly all of those areas of your life for a Gemini sun, moon, or especially rising are powering up over the next 20 years, but it will be the first five degrees, sun, sun, moon, and rising in particularly, particular that start to feel this effect in March through June, but also over the next three to four years. It's more your story later on late degree, Gemini people, sun, moon, or rising, like, you know, the later the degree, the closer it is to 2044. Um, but you have the vibe, right? Of Pluto in the ninth. You feel it. You could have a death of a religious belief, the end of a faith practice, um, a falling away from a father figure because um, the ninth house is a father figure in a Vedic tradition, end of a relationship with a father figure. Um, like at a very practical level, imagine you're a student and you're, you've got your Gemini rising zero degrees and Pluto in March, April, May goes into your ninth house. There's a transformation in your academic program that's going to knock your socks off. You might have majored in like cosmic astrophysics and decide to be a veterinarian. I mean, some big changes are coming here and they're going to power you into something powerful and positive and new, but different than maybe where you were going in the beginning. Don't forget, I talked about my um, Aries, uh, Sun and Moon and a bunch of planets, Stellium. You know, when Pluto went through the Capricorn zone, there's no way in 2008 I had any idea that my entire career was going to be online after that. No idea. It started very innocuously with us, like Pluto's no, the small things become the big things. It started innocuous, innocuously with me creating a report for tarot.com on astrology and tarot that was accepted in 2000, late 2007. And next thing I know, my whole life turns into an online reality where I work online. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. So get ready for that. And also, I mean, this is good flow from Pluto to your body. So you may want to power up your body. Um, and Pluto is an Aquarius, which is ideas and the mind, but groups of belonging. Um, some of you may form new spiritual communities or get involved in powerful new spiritual communities. Why did I say that? Because the ninth house is a house of God. And I hope my battery is going to last on my device. If it doesn't, I'll have to charge it up. Hang on. Oh, I've got the charger here. <laughs> hang on i don't want this to be dark when i finish today it's been dark in my last two videos uh, i'm trying my best not to like end up in the pitch black with you guys again uh it's like vancouver canada and it's like 2 30 and it's almost so dark so soon here now we're in the northern latitude it's like our latitude uh, ties in with scotland right <laughs> across the world in vancouver all right seattle too the same thing in the u.s um Okay, that's all. Moving into the next sign. Remember, this is a teaser uh, of what's ahead, and I'll probably do a so much longer video in the new year to address this as well, but best to have a flavor, right? Um, so Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign, you're coming out from underneath the energy of Pluto squaring your ascendant, your identity, your sun, or your moon. Many of you Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising since 2008 have been going through a gauntlet of challenges. Does that sound about right? As Pluto has transversed your seventh house of significant others, marriage partners, business partners, clients, audience, marketplace for your 10th house of career, because seventh is 10th from the 10th. And possibly this has transformed your 
work in the world, the people you reach out to. My sister as a cancer rising was a nurse in the hospital, now is a private healer doing magical, miraculous healings for people at a distance. She's amazing. And that's a deep transformation that was ongoing as she began to study alternative healing, even while she was working in a hospital. So transformation to who she reaches out to in her career for a marriages. And if you've been under marital distress, anytime from 2008 until March of 2023, at some point that may have been a story where there were separations or divorces or deaths of spouse, you know, and, or marriage like commitments or business partners. During this transit, marriages have had to rebirth themselves, to renew, to regenerate, and to find new ground that's more powerful to, to resolve any conflicts that may have arisen. Or it's possible that your significant other was being plutonianized and becoming more powerful in their own life in some way. Now that's coming to an end and you're probably feeling relieved. And now what's going to happen is that Pluto moves into a wealth house and also the house of the dead at your eighth house Aquarius zone. Now he's the king of the house of the dead. He rules Hades, right? So in some ways you could say he's quite naturally happy there. That's why in modern astrology, they give him the rulership of Scorpio. Because in an Aries zero point first house chart, Scorpio is the eighth house. And we can debate whether that works or not, but that's the reason for it. So Pluto in Scorpio in the eight, one of the reasons, Pluto in Scorpio, eighth house energies, you know, that's the idea. But this is an Aquarius zone, not a Scorpio zone for you. So your eighth house of the dad is very busy. It's a group house. <laughs> it's, a, it's a group home for the dead. It's Aquarian. It's societal. It's, a, it's humanitarian. You're the kind of person, Cancer, should you become quite wealthy, who will be philanthropic and humanitarian with your wealth. But Pluto here can bring inheritances, legacy wealth, dramatic changes in fortunes, and more wealth. He is a wealth god. You need other things happening for that. Like I'll give you a teaser. Uh, you'll have Venus in your second house of earnings for four months next year. And it will slightly connect to Pluto still being in Aquarius. Like, you know, like the first week of the first, like June the 5th to the 11th, you got Venus in the second and Pluto still in your eighth. There could be a little wealth pop for you there where you get a taste of what we're talking about. We're talking about a story that continues to impact you for the next 20 years until 2044. I'm not really going to talk about degrees for Aquarius, uh, for you cancers, because Pluto is an aversion to your ascendant. So I don't really know that it's going to work to go over the first five degrees. You can try it out yourself. Sun, moon or rising in the first five degrees. Do you feel it more? Now it's hot in here. Um, you might want to tell me about how that works because technically 150 degrees called a quincunx in modern astrology is called an aversion in the ancient world. And there's no way that you your Pluto can see you. Now here's the good news. Pluto can't see you. He's not going to bother you too much. I mean your body, right? So if Pluto is an aversion to your bod, I say that's pretty a good thing that you're, you're, you're safe from the Pluto for the next 20 years trying to kill you. <laughs> Oh, torture you, kill you, whatever you might want to do with you. Um, secrets are the eighth house. Pluto is going to go into your house of secrets, family secrets in particular, but any secrets, uh, marital secrets, family secrets, family of origin secrets, ancestral secrets. Pluto likes to, you know, expose things that are hidden and bring them to the light, which is why, you know, Pluto and Scorpio was a lot of era of, of dark stuff being disclosed and shown to the world. I think for you, there's definitely a chance that some family secrets could be popping March uh, the 23rd to June 11th or family or spousal secrets can come out of the woodwork. So uh, buckle up for that. Otherwise, in general, I'd say that between two, now and 2044 or, you know, between 2023 and 2044, you're getting wealthier. Bottom line, I don't know how some of its inheritance, some of its investments, some of its, um, I don't know, you know, chunky money, um, but that's happening for you for sure. Anything else? Love stories and sexual intimacy, they go very deep. Pluto here would be like Tantra or, you know, sex, sex magic, maybe, but just going deeper in intimacy with those people with whom you are sexually involved. Royalty income can be the eighth house. If you're cancer rising, for instance, writing a book and all of that, possibly it could really power up financial success. And I'm just going to sidebar because Saturn moving into the house of book publishing as well for three years or two and a half years is really positive for you. That starts 
next year. So for some of you, you may you generate wealth through royalty income. J.K. Rowling, very wealthy through her Harry Potter series, has a lot of planets in her eighth house. And last, you'll dig into the mysteries of life, the occult mysteries. You won't be afraid of death. You might want to become a death doula even. I mean, you'll get more confrontationally intimate with death itself and also deep occult mysteries, magic, and those sorts of things. will be a part of what you wish to unearth in your treasure hunt of Pluto in your eighth house. Are you watching with me in the premiere and you haven't subscribed to my channel or are you watching the premiere and you forgot to hit the like button? Then if you hit it, I will be happy. And if you subscribe, I'll be even happier. Believe it or not, that really matters in my world because otherwise I have, this is my business. This is how I make a living and being on my channel is something I love to do, but I need your support. So thank you. All right. Let's keep going and talk about Leo, sun, moon, and rising. I just had a terrible thought. Am I recording? Thank God. Um, Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign people. I cannot accommodate temperature right now. I was so cold today. Why am I telling Leo's fire sign? And now I'm so warm. <laughs> Snow here in Vancouver today, Canada on December 18th. Um, Leo, sun, moon, and rising. Well, uh, fiery face to you. This is a movement of Aquarius, of Pluto through Aquarius, your marriage house. Now, before that, Pluto was going through your health and sickness kind of vibe, uh, karma, karma, karmic debt, and also the, your sixth house of work and work routines and habits, transforming that whole part of your sky so that you could come into some new, more powerful work and health protocols. And that would have been the house of pets. And so between 2008 and 2023, you may have had the most powerful pet of your life, or you may have experienced the loss of pets. This is also a house of tenancies and you might have had a lot of turbulence around leases and tenancies and, ten and things like that, possibly. Now, or even come into a condition in your workplace where you had a demagogue or a, a narcissist or a controlling powerful person during those years. Now that's over with, okay? coming to the 2023 shift. Yes, there's some back and forth to your sixth house, but we're talking about a sea change energy. And this is going to be uh, your seventh house of marriage and business partners and clients, audience, and marketplace. In this regard, Pluto is transforming and changing and revolutionizing your marriage house. If you are a Leo and you have a marriage partner, especially rising sign, and your Leo rising is in the first three, or de three degrees, I say, of Leo. This is big. This is hitting you 2023, 24, 25. This can dramatically end a marriage, change a marriage. I don't want to worry you, but you know, hopefully this doesn't upset you, but you know, your partner passes away. Or um, it could also open up some kind of profound new relationship that is deeply intimate and, and life-changing. And or you a new partnership comes in with somebody who's powerful. I mean, like, you know, wealthy, successful, powerful character. By the time this transit is done in 2044, Leos will have gone through the energy of transformation through other, that Pluto person you get involved with, and persons, powerful people, powerful marriage, powerful business, powerful clients, all of that, it's going to help transform you on the other side of that oppositional story. Okay. Wealth can come through other people. Power can come through other people during that transit. Pluto will be opposite the sun for some of you or the moon. Uh, in, if your moon or sun is in the first three degrees or so, maybe even five of Leo, that's a mother, mother figure, moon, father, father figure, son uh, could dramatically impact their well-being, their health, their, you know, things like that. So pay attention to that. Just a forewarned is forearmed. That's a Pluto opposite maternal and paternal figures in your life, even grandparents. And now your, your moon can be your purpose and your Moon can be your home, your safety and security needs, and the sun could potentially represent you, your purpose and your career. And those two for people, Leo, sun, moon, and rising, first five degrees, most impacted. 
um, in the short term, like 23, 24, 25. And then of course, as time goes, as I say, every time, obviously, if your rising sign is 29 Leo, you're the last to get involved in the direct story. You're like the 2040 to 44 kind of person, right? So it's all, but you still feel the vibe. You feel the vibe of Pluto opposite you on the other side of the storyline. Any planets in your first house, they're going to be opposed by Pluto. Imagine like uh, you have, imagine your Leo rising with Venus in your first house. Just imagine that Venus, the goddess of your beauty and love and whatever aesthetic and values is going to be opposed by Pluto. So, you know, this is where a personal reading can help. Check out my description box. Come see me, you know, if you've got a lot of planets in Leo rising sign first house. All right. Oh my God, I'm having a sugar low. I promise not to eat a tangerine. That's an inside joke <laughs> for my channel. People who follow me. <laughs> oh my God, I'm trying to get my hair to look better. Um, Next, uh, anything else I want to say about this? Pluto opposing your ascendant is your identity and your body. You might be getting ready for huge changes to who you think you are. I am blank. You might also have to deal with some challenges to your health, um, but over the 20 years, you know, so... Pluto itself doesn't do a lot uh, unless there's planetary reception. So it's more like if you have planets in your first house, then you're going to feel some of this more acutely impacting identity, I think, and your health. <clears throat> Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign people. So Virgo, uh, in your sky, Pluto has been moving through Capricorn since 2008. And this is your fifth house of children. This is like where you get pregnant. I know a Virgo rising Pluto in the house of children who had like uh, an abortion and a couple of clients who had miscarriages with this transit, but it's been going on since 2008 and will not complete. Where's the dog gone? I just saw the dog. Hang on. I want to make sure this dog doesn't have to go to the bathroom. I have to pause for you. Sorry, guys. Hang in there. It's so far so good, but I think I do need to take the dog for a spin shortly. So let me finish continuing for a bit. Um, so where was I? Yeah, so Pluto has been going through your fifth house since 2008. This could have made relationships with children, pregnancy, conception, and childbirth pretty intense. A lot of energy going down there in that part of your sky. Love, love affairs that have completely been with narcissists or abusive people. Let me tell you, I can talk about that with a couple of my Virgo people and Virgo rising, especially getting involved romantically with profoundly broken people, particularly narcissistic controlling or personality disordered. Um, Pluto going through your fifth house could have trans formed your relationship to um, play, fun, pleasure, and joy. How Pluto could do that is intensify your desire for joy and pleasure, but also maybe find, make you find more um, transformative means for those things to occur. Romances that happened during that transit since 2008, should that be something that's happened and baked into your romantic entanglement? You married that person that you dated when Pluto was transiting your <laughs> fifth house this is an intense romance for you it's definitely going to change your world and um your children you know not to be like some you virgo risings could be in your 80s listening to this right i have people that old on my channel this could have been also a transit 2008 to 2023 where you lost a child okay uh passed away miscarried whatever or had power struggles with one of your children now, Pluto's done with that story and is moving into your sixth house of work and health stuff. Pluto here will transform how you take care of your health and how you do the work you're here to do in the world. Pluto coming into this part of your sky could make you very powerful in a work situation, workplace, within a field of endeavor or with people in power within your field of endeavor. And so Pluto here, of course, in your sixth house will try in your 10th house of career and reputation, suggesting that by... 2044, you have really powered up, especially if your midheaven is in the 10th house. Again, whole sign houses, midheaven floats. But for the lot of you, there's a lot of power here. And some of you will get very powerful pets. I think of a bull mastiff or something, you know what I mean? Or, um, you know, a big, powerful animal um, and or have powerful outcomes when it comes to debt, debt relief, karmic and real. And also certainly if you're um, looking to, you um, um, release yourself from debts, even literal, not just karmic. Pluto here can kill the debts, right? Death of the debts, karmic and real. Finally, anything else about that placement? Um, it's kind of like 
you could be very powerful over the next two decades in the work you're here to do in the world. Some of you may not know, my daughter's a uh, Virgo rising, still finishing her higher ed. So she doesn't know what her work will be, but when she gets going in a field of endeavor, no doubt about it. I mean, you've got a lot of energy going on here with that Pluto placement in the sixth house. Some of it's going to depend on other factors, um, but you know, in your individual sky, but for a general call, there's like power regarding work and field of endeavors and the work you do in the world. Six house is like, I do the work. So I'll give you an example. I'm a dentist, 10th house reputation. Your work is that you sit in an office and drill into people's mouths or something. So it's kind of like the way the work itself unfolds and the workspace and the collegiate space. Okay. I mean, certainly Pluto here can make you a, a big boss in which you have a lot of staff that can be true over the next two decades. Also, um, if you are getting ready to leave your work, like you're ready to retire, Pluto is the death of work um, house, right? Slavery house, actually, servitude. So a lot of you are just going to retire. This is Pluto saying it's time to quit that job, quit that work. Maybe you'll retire to go to something new or you'll just be retiring. But Pluto could be, bring that on for a lot of Virgo rising people, especially most true for Virgo rising. Okay. All right. Um, sun and moon secondarily. I mean, Pluto for this, uh, the moon people could be a changing of your home and Pluto sun people changing your career. But for the most part, I say if you're a rising Virgo, this looks like you could all step away from a line of work. If you have a line of work, you know, if you're working, my daughter's a student, won't apply. Um, I think that's it. I'm just pondering. Give me a minute. Hmm. When Pluto is going through your sixth house, he's going to be in a trine relationship to your second house of earnings. So career and money stories really ramp up for you, Virgos, over the years ahead. And certainly given that Saturn, the lord of where Pluto's traveling, exalts your earnings house, there's also a sense that even if you do retire or step away from a line of work, the longer term arc is supportive of increased revenue and ways of earning money and or making money make money for you as Pluto sextiles the house of stocks, investments, legacy wealth, uh, royalty income. So overall, this is a great placement for Virgo sun, moon and rising financially. Pluto sextiling the eighth house, if you're a Virgo sun, moon or rising, um, could bring in uh, an inheritance as well. And it could happen anytime in the next 20 years. Of course, we're talking about March 23rd to June 11th, where maybe there's a brush of inheritance in the air of some sort. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign people in your sky, the energy of this um, Plutonian transit through Aquarius is extremely positive in some ways because it trines your ascendant. However, it's also going to bring transformation to your romantic life, to your life with your children, should you have them, and to the whole concept of what brings you joy, enjoyment, inspiration, creativity, etc. Before this happened, because this is fifth house energy for you, you know, Pluto was going through your fourth house. You may have gotten wealthy on land, real estate, legacy wealth, inheritances. You may have been able to parlay money in the stock markets, investments, stuff like that. You may have been uh, powerful and from your home base. Um, the Pluto Capricorn transit is ending. And now you're moving into this more creative Pluto energy. I mean, Pluto in the fifth house can definitely fire up some deep, deep romance. I mean, OMG, or um, get you deeply involved in some projects that are paradigm shifting creative endeavors. Um, so many ways that muse driven fifth house may look. You know, you can look at the fifth house too as kind of a talent, the place where you have natural gifts and talents or may learn about those talents by studying something. So some of you may be powering the way the heck up in some natural get talents that you may have that may have been dormant and Pluto will reveal those talents over the 20 years that follow. If you're a, a Libra sun, a Libra moon and rising in the first five degrees of Libra in particularly particular, you know, the taste or tease next year and then 2020. 425, you know, as this continues to go on, you're going to feel the most in the first four years. Let's say that you will feel more empowered. Some of you may want to move to a foreign land, a foreign shore, connect with um, higher education, um, really uh, find a deeper spiritual path because of the trine to your ninth house from Pluto here as well. Trines are lovely, flowing, positive energy. And with Pluto in your fifth house, especially if you already have children, 
I, uh, this can be a deepening and a more powerful relationship. And be all, a little careful here for the firstborn. Like if you're a Libra rising sun and moon, no, if you're a Libra rising in the first two or three degrees of Libra and you're trying to have a child, conceive a child right now, um, I'm not sure this is the best time. Pluto here does lead to miscarriages or losses of abortions and things like that. Just to be realistic, you know, astrology isn't all rainbows and freaking unicorns. It is realistic. I warned my daughter about one of these kinds of transits well in advance and it happened to her, you know, not, not this one, but something like it. And uh, so you got to pay attention to these things. They happen. You can avoid the worst of it. I would say like, Hey, I'm a Libra rising and I'm trying to have a baby this year. Ah, and you're like Libra rising zero or one degree. And I'm like, maybe not, maybe wait till the year after give Pluto a little latitude unless you're on a TikTok clock where you really want to hurry through. Um, okay. Don't get involved in romances unless you're ready for depth when Pluto's here. I don't mean for, for till 2044. I mean, if you're a Libra, zero degrees, one degree, two degree, maybe three degree ascendant and Pluto is in March, you know, 23rd to June 11th at zero degrees to start a relationship with Pluto in your house of romantic love, unless that's your thing, it's going to be really intense, really intense. You, know, you want, you might want that intensity, that obsession energy, even that could be at your, what you need to learn as a soul, but I'm just saying that's what's that can do there. <laughs> um, Pluto is God of secrets in the underworld. This is the house of romance. If you're a Libra who's married, you might be tempted into an obsessive compulsive romantic thing, you know, in that March 23rd to uh, next year to June 11th, watch out for that. And that's going to be true throughout 2024 to 25 for the early born Libra ascendant sun, moon and rising Pluto trining the sun, a uh, good news for security and home stuff. And your mom, Pluto trining your, the, the sun, good for your father, father figures, uh, positive energy for your purpose and career powering up general vibe. Okay. Moving on. Now I heard that song from the Jeffersons, you know, back I'm, I'm old guys. I was born in 1962. It's like moving on up to the big time to a deluxe apartment in the sky. <laughs> so we have a joke in my family, which is, I can't sing. And it's no, it is no joke. All right. But I'm saying you're moving on up. The reason I sang that for you is because Libra sun people have a trine in the early degrees. So your sun is in the first five degrees of Libra over the next three or four years, you are powering up in your purpose and career success um scorpio sun moon and rising sign well especially rising sign right in the are you in the premiere with me are you watching have you hit the subscribe button and you're a lurker who never subscribes and if you're also here do you never hit my like button why not if you do hit the like button for this video while you're watching or when you're watching the replay it really helps the channel grow i would so appreciate you supporting me to create a career as an astrologer otherwise i'm going to move out of this career and do something completely different like become a film writer um seriously um you know i'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of things I'd love to do. Um, Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising. Now that I left my confessional booth with you, let's go ahead and talk about you. Scorpios, the story for you is about Pluto moving in the sky through your fourth house. Now, this is after he spent 2008 to 2023 in your third house of trips, travel, siblings, local neighborhood, uh, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews, things to do with your online world, your virtual neighborhood, uh, and skills-based learning. Now, I, I don't know. It's like my son's a Scorpio rising. How did that work for him? Hmm. Well, since 2008, um, he has uh, changed his neighborhood a few times. Since 2008, he's done some big travel and a lot of transformative trips with his wife, to be, I hope, the woman he's with. Since 2008, he's had a... Um, intense relationship <laughs> with learning a skill, which is his music uh, abilities as a musician and a sound engineer. These are just examples, right? But I'm putting a few on the table for you. Um, this coincided with him studying sound engineering, for example. Now, so power, power through sound engineering. He's a top of his class grad. And as Pluto gets ready to leave this educational zone, which also rules elementary and high school, right? Uh, just so you know. Um, you know, it's interesting because my son was knifed, uh, bottled, or actually you know, almost killed in his last year of high school. And uh, that ties in with Pluto death in the house of high schools. So you see what I mean? You can't make this up. So he almost got killed through a, 
a violent attack by somebody when he was in high school. Ah, so that's done for him, Scorpio rising. Now he's all you Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising, especially rising, Pluto moves to the fourth house. The fourth house is the house of your home. It's where you live. It's your ancestral line. It's the house of the mother. It's the house of things to do with your ancestors and legacy wealth. Now, don't be afraid, like I just said, the house of the mother, because this is not the moon. The moon is the mother in your chart. This is just the house of the mother. I'm not saying your mom's going to die. But I would say that Pluto moving through your fourth house is going to transform your relationship to your mother. You could also have huge transformation regarding your ancestral stories, what you think you're here for, what you believe your ancestors want you to do. Ancestral work might come to the forefront. Secrets in the family of origin, especially toxic, shameful, difficult, hidden stories will come to light in the next 20 years. Those icky ones that no one wants to talk about. Wealth can be accrued here. This is a wealth transit. Okay, so a lot of you will begin to build your wealth through home, land, property, real estate, legacy wealth. This is a wealth builder. This is true mostly for Scorpio rising, sun and moon secondarily. Pluto is in a waning square to your Scorpio sun, your purpose, your, your career, and your father, moon, your mother, your home, your safety needs, all right? So it's like, because Pluto's moving away from it, it's not as powerful as an approach, it's inferior energy, but nonetheless, you get some collateral blowback here. So if your moon is in Scorpio, or your sun is in Scorpio, this could be influencing your father or mother figures in your life. This is true in the short term, 2023, 24, 25, 26 even, for those people with your Scorpio sun or moon in zero to five degrees of Scorpio. Otherwise, it's again, for the ascendant people about you. Pluto is squaring your identity. So you're gonna change who you think you are in the world. He's opposite your house of career. That's likely to transform over the next 20 years. And he's an approaching a superior square to your descendant. So for Scorpio rising with an, a, an ascendant, descendant axis in the first five degrees of Scorpio, there's a very profound chance of a change in your marital status with your significant other. So separations and divorces is what I'm saying. Um, that's not true, of course, anyone with the later ascendant, uh, that's not really for you. Um, you know, this is for the early degree Scorpio rising people. Um, I'm just thinking, thinking, thinking. Certainly wealth through land, investments, property, real estate holdings can be very successful for Scorpio people in general, rising more specifically over the next two decades as this new energy enters into your sky. All right, and um, I think I'm done. I think I'm done for now and uh, good luck with that, Scorpio. All right, moving on to Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. I hopefully I'm not gonna be in the pitch black yet. Let me angle to the, there, that's better. There's no way I'm on a kitchen, you know, I'm at a kitchen, um, you know, like a table, like a island, but it's hard to get the angle toward the windows that are way over there with that, with me sitting here. And let me see if I can fix this for you, Sagittarius. Then I'll take the dog for a walk because it's snowy and beautiful outside today. All right, I'm in the light. <laughs> praise, oh, praise the Lord. Mike should at least be facing me. All right, um, hang on. Thank you to whoever said put a, I put a dishcloth underneath the mic. This is an old mic now. I've had it for since 2014 or something. It is good quality, Yeti blue, but um, sometimes it has weird sound, sound effects. I hope it's okay today. And I think this is helping. Thank you so much for the tip. Um, one of my commenters. Um, sometimes I put my hair back when I'm on the mic, right? Like this. But honestly, it's not affecting the mic. It's not like my hair is like over the mic or over my face. <laughs> You can tell that I've been doing this too long now. I mean, talking, because now I'm talking about me again. Sagittarius, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. All right. Now, Pluto has been moving in Capricorn. Your wealth and house through your earnings, how you make money, uh, your hustle, um, your money story, your resources, your possessions. I know um, that this has maybe been difficult for you. You've had some turbulence, some highs and some lows, some deaths and rebirths, some big power ups, some big power downs as Pluto has moving through this second house 
of earnings influencing also for some of you, your career choices as well since 2008. I know a Sag son who retired in 2008 only to have his all of his retirement money crash in a market. Um, that fucked him up, excuse my language, and he had to go back to work. So I can, my heart goes out to Sagittarius who went through this. I know another Sagittarius person who got a lot of money through spousal support and stuff like that, but as Pluto is finishing up in Capricorn, all that is crashing in the market. So it's like this kind of intense power death, rebirth, money story, possession story. You had a house, you lost a house, you had a car, you lost the car, you wanted the car, you did whatever, possessions, earnings, resources, often connected to career, sometimes through legacy wealth, spousal support and alimony across the way. These things are like, like the Sag son I'm talking about had to give two thirds of his, his pension to his ex-wife in an unfair court case. I mean, so Pluto's teaching you hard lessons about what real power is when it comes to resources and money. Okay. Not just the surface level. What is your true calling voice vocation that you wish to offer the world Pluto in the second house. So this is a story since 2008. It's just about done. The first taste of the new story, March 23rd to June 11th next year, as we get a zero degree movement of Pluto into your third house of siblings, not to worry you, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising, but especially Sag rising. If you have your rising sign in the first three degrees of Sagittarius and Pluto is at zero degrees next spring or whatever, you know, March, June, July, May, June, this can be a death of a sibling or a challenge in the life of a sibling and uncle, cousin, niece, and nephew. Extended family, childhood friends, friends close to home, people you hang with in your neighborhood, that kind of thing is being activated, power in the neighborhood. So some of you will power into a better and more good, exciting, but transformative place to live. This will be also true. This is why your personal chart is so different than a general re bell curve reading. If the IC is in the third house and the midheaven is floating in your whole sign ninth house, this is going to incite a change in the 20 years that follow of home that's quite powerful and important. However, it's going to be if you're I see is in the first three degrees of Aquarius, you're going to move sooner than, than later. Um, there's a feeling here because you can travel and you may do very powerful journeys with Pluto here, but you can also learn things, especially a skill you wish to use. And Pluto would be powerful skill that you can use in the world. Some of you will begin to look at that and say, oh, what do I want to learn? So I have a sad friend who's retiring and moving to Portugal. I bet you will end up studying something, learning something new, not just like sitting around on his, on his bum, you know, he'll probably say, oh, I'm going to learn this. And next thing you know, he's doing the thing he's learning, enjoying the powerful connection to a skill space learning. And Pluto here is power and sibling. So you may have your sibling try to rule the day or be too bossy or powerful over you. On the other hand, you could have a powerful healing and reconciliation with a sibling, particularly an eldest for reasons I won't go into, but it's there in the chart. Um, You know, the whole third house energy is, is about your, your workaday busyness, your everyday life, your, you know, what you're up to, you know, it's a busy house. It's a house of writing. If you want to write something and Pluto goes through here, you can get wealthy through writing. So if you're a Sag who wants to write, go for it. Um, over the next 20 years, that's true. Little foretaste in the spring uh, next year to July, June the 11th. Um, communications, powerful communications. This is journalism, periodicals the online world, your website, and this all gets very powered up. If you wish to, to study or teach, very powered up here. Like if you wanna be a teacher of any kind and you wanna teach something like Plutonian as, you know, like, you know, conspiracy theory or secrets or sexuality or something like that, you might power up in that area. You never know, you never know. My ex-husband is a well-trained Tantra guy and maybe he'll end up teaching Tantra with his Tantrika wife uh, as his Sag Sun energy takes over with his Pluto in the third. She would love him to co-teach with her. He's always resisting. Maybe that'll turn around. Just some fun stories. Um, okay. Um, 
I think that's all I can say for now. Um, I mean, when Pluto is in your third house, he's definitely in a trine to your seventh. So if you're a single Sag looking for a really a good romantic partner, certainly you can find that whoever you meet in this 20 year window will be good for you because Pluto trining this, the seventh house of significant committed love, sextiling the house of romance for single Sagges, this is very positive and can open up something, especially when Saturn just before Saturn gets there, I'm not liking that Saturn transit through the fifth for romance. It's going to bake in a hard, a hard romance unless it was somebody older. But before 2025, with Saturn off duty and Pluto powering up sextile to your romance house, this could be very good for a new long lasting relationship forming in the next three years. Um, that would be more true for Sag's in the first five degrees of Sag for your rising sign. Okay, moving forward. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. People, the energy of Pluto moving through your, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I had a brain fart. Uh, Pluto moving through your second house of earnings is going to power up your money and power down your money. It's not an easy transit. You can have a lot and then not enough. It can be intense. You could be obsessive about your money and earnings and possessions. You may be fraught with like desire to rise to your financial power, but at what cost? These are stories that Pluto in the second house of earnings, possessions, and resources can bring. But ultimately, if you handle this transit right over the next 20 years, it can bring great wealth to you, especially if you have your midheaven in the 10th house and you have a Pluto trying to that floating 10th house whole sign, midheaven. And um, your career and reputation can increase, your money from your career, your purpose, etc. Now, this is for you Capricorns, a good thing because you've been going through Pluto in the house of you, your body, your identity since 2008. And it's a been intense time. Um, you have had Pluto opposite your marriage house and some of you went through a divorce. Okay. So yeah, my ex-husband Capricorn rising, we separated during the Pluto transit through the set across from him across his house, barreling death and rebirth energies into his marriage house. <laughs> So yes, I was a part of that story of a cap rising marriage and, and I, we didn't survive that Pluto from the house of him opposite the marriage house, right? So if you are with somebody, you, this is your past, you already went through it. it some of you 2008 to 2022 experienced the death of a relationship or the death of a spouse, basically. My ex that I'm talking about, bless his soul, had both two marriages in his first and his second. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Oh my gosh, it's intense for him. I imagine that, how intense that is. And um, so bottom line, Pluto is done with you. <laughs> You are powered up to the level you need. You've gotten rid of the marriages that aren't good for you. And any relationship that's called a marriage that started with Pluto going through your first house is intense anyway. And uh, just keep that in mind. Pluto's not entirely done with this story, though. He's still going to cross through you and the marriage house until 2024, November, when Pluto finally leaves for good into Aquarius. So we're getting little ingress tastes of this uh, story. So not to worry anybody, but there's still the possibility of problematic discourse or separation with a marriage partner until 2024, November, and that story ends. Now, Pluto moving in the second house is definitely going to make your resources grow. Um, and you may dig up beneath the surface opportunities for new resources by selling possessions, but also maybe investing in markets, stock markets, gold, silver, precious metals, you know, things like Pluto rules, possibly. I don't want to, not your financial advisor, but it doesn't says that over the next 20 years, you're going to be very resourceful and powerful and getting yourself to have the money you need. If it's not your career, that's fine. As I said, it could be how you manage the money you have. Um, Pluto in your second house, sextiles a house of land and resources. For, you might buy and sell land. You might develop land. You might get involved in land sales, especially when Saturn and uh, enters into your fourth house in 25, receiving a sextile from Pluto, building, constructing, managing, um, owning, uh, renovating, refurbishing land, getting property, real estate, these sorts of things for some of you uh, Capricorn rising people. If your sun and moon is in Capricorn, you know, and you're receiving the uh, journey of Pluto through your second house, possibly it could be powering up through career or through home-based activities or something like that. Again, these are often more accurate by listening to your rising sign. Um, 
I would say too, that if you're looking for your calling and you want to find your purpose in life and your vocational path is elusive to you, power Pluto here could power up some deeper acknowledgement you may transform and die and rebirth your values and what you think is true like you always valued honesty and you think it's a stupid value now or you've always you know what i mean like things that you think are valuable and important not just possessions but values can transform dramatically you always valued monogamy now you couldn't give a flying f you know so things change things change as pluto cha challenges you to look more deeply at your values um and to some extent, maybe the first five degree cap sun and moon have received this, but don't forget, second house is an aversion to your ascendant, right? So it's not necessarily the best way to put it for you guys. Um, lastly, but not leastly, um, Pluto can help you transform your sicknesses and turn them into health as he trines a house of sickness or transform your work and make your work uh, something that works for you. So better work, better career, better money stories for cap risings over the next 20 years. The second house can be the house of the second marriage. If you're in a second marriage, this can also be transforming in Vedic astrology, your family of origin is the second house, including your parents and your kid, I think your siblings. But I mean, that could also be about powering there, but also about death in those larger family structures. Okay, and that's over the next 20 years. Okay, I'm almost done. Capricorn, we, we just did you. I hope I wasn't too fast. Um, Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. So I need to move, guys. I need to move. Maybe I should just stand up and jump a bit. Hang on. Yes, you got me in my living room, but you've got the world behind me. <laughs> I just need to move my body because I'm feeling absolutely chair bound for the last, what, how long I've been going? I have no idea. Two more signs. I'm not going to speed through, I promise. <sighs> Jumping jacks. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> All right, back to you. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. Pluto, Pluto in your 12th house. Very subtle very psychological, very spiritual. I had two spiritual awakenings in my Aquarius rising. Big blast in 2011, created my Awakened Dreamer blog. I had another one in 2018. I'm talking at the, like the whole, there is no me, all is one, I am it, you are that, just this, like non-duality blast, right? And they're still there. You know, you, you go on and chop wood, carry water. What are you going to do? Get, you know, a, a robe and go off to the ashram? So this is me living through Pluto, massive power, massive transformation, massive death and rebirth in my 12th house. Now, this started in 2008. And, you know, so it's been a while that we've been experiencing this transformative Pluto transit helps us kill off, get rid of and die out our self undoing addiction, bad habits, clear our karma, like blast through the house of past lives and clear the karmic slate if we need to. Um, we can draw in powerful, subversive people into our lives who are not our allies but our enemies hidden powerful enemies i've had a few we won't talk about the g-u-r-u who was malefic <laughs> my boy was he a challenge and very powerful hidden enemy at that so long story short i've been there done that finished and hopefully you have too pluto traveling here foreign lands foreign shores exotic places getaways far away 12th house and you know money you make from online world revenues if you have international barter and trade so you know, like, for instance, my clients are around the world. I use PayPal and Stripe. Um, since this transit started, I began making all my money online. It started in 2007, actually, with a um, product. I sold it for royalty income at tarot.com. And over time, this has now been a way of making money for me. It may be coming to an end, like making money through my online international world. Um, power, Pluto, wealth there but also trips and travel that you have taken as a uh, Aquarius rising especially around the world have been hugely spiritually transformative haven't they mm -hmm. I've been off to ashrams and spiritual retreats and kind of stuff like that what do you call that stuff when you do like cathartic work and oh my god this transit involved a lot those trips like the trip to Bali almost killed me I got so sick there in 2017 but it was highly transformative <laughs> working with spiritual mentors and shamans mm, stuff like that okay so next 
we have Pluto in our house, our first house, the house of our identity, our body. Now, no, it's not going to kill us, okay? <laughs> um, but we're going to face death more squarely, mortality, the death, death archetype, the death rebirth archetype, the transformation energy, the re rebirth of ourselves, um, the paradigm shifting revolution of self in some way, uh, who you think you are is not who you think you are. This transit will reveal to you who you really are. Now, Pluto coming through the house of us Aquarians means Pluto is opposing our descendant. Okay, that's happened to the caps before us, Capricorn rising. And if you're in a marriage relationship or long-term business partnership, or this is your house of those you serve, client, audience, and other, these are also changing because Pluto's looking right across the way at that. Well, at the same time, Pluto is in an applying trine to our house of children and romance, where we power up in our relationship to our given children that we have, or power up to have children, or power up around romantic love. If you are going to be in love with somebody and Pluto is in Aquarius at the time, as an Aquarius rising especially, then that person is going to be an incredibly important romance in your life. Now, also, Pluto opposite the descendant will it's like you will not suffer fools gladly you are a force to be reckoned with and you will probably not be able to uh, attract and maintain and consistently keep a relationship that doesn't go to the depths of the underworld with you I have to say my Capricorn ex-husband that's true he wanted to go deeply into Tantra and I'm like ah been there done that so you know i the place he wanted me to go with him i couldn't go and his new wife said tantrika how perfect right um so i don't feel bad about that that wasn't where i was i wasn't the person to go there with him so now all of a sudden we aquarians are going to say the same thing you can't go there with me into the depth into the secrets into the paradigm into the revolution into the underworld into the conspiracy theory world into like the power below the power if you can't go there you're not my person that kind of thing um, if you have a need to, you will not know yet what it is, because this is a transit that takes on a life over 20 years, right? But you will serve a different audience, marketplace and clientele. So right now I serve a broad base of people on YouTube and I have clients around the world. If I'm even into astrology at this point, I'm going to maybe be attracting completely different clients and clientele. Oh, my daughter just came in the room. You look gorgeous in that outfit. What? You look beautiful. Thanks. Oh, that's such a hot outfit on you. Thank you. Hey, she's a workout buff. You want to come on YouTube and show no, yourself? No, yeah. She, okay. She's got a great body. <laughs> anyway, she gave me to go work out to say her new workout outfit looks hot, hot, yeah. hot, hot. So anyway, back to you guys. Um, basically, I think that we Aquarians are the pivot lead goose for humanity, not to be a narcissist about ourselves, but we are pretty important. We are the ones that are going to take humanity to the next level because that Saturn Jupiter conjunction, the great Kings conjoining together at zero degrees of Aquarius on December 21st, 2020 for the next 20 years, initiate Aquarians, mostly rising, but sun and moon too, to step up to the plate and guide and, and lead humanity. And now we Aquarians have Pluto and the sign of us. I actually thought of creating a community called the, um, what was I going to, the water berries, the water bearer society. Maybe I should get the domain before I put this out there, because I thought, what if I got all the Aquarian people together, especially rising and we became the water bearer society and went, what are we here to do? You know, it's kind of like a secret cult of goodness. <laughs> um, so Pluto can transform your, your sense of identity here. And it's, you're an early born Aquarius. I'm not, I'm 16 Aquarius, 16, 18, because it depends on which adjusted chart I use, but if say your Aquarius rising is in the first five degrees, you're really feeling the sense of a need to drop a mask to re-identify re your identity to completely go below the surface where is power who is power how are you powerful where does power come up in your life where do you struggle with power where are you in power struggles big deep spiritual soul defining transformation of self questions emerging for all of the aquarius risings but yeah in the next three years four years it's the first five degree aquarius sun moon and rising who get the most juice okay the most intensity uh, coming off of this transit. Um, but we all feel it. It's like saying, do you feel that black hole next to you? And, and one person is 20 miles away and the next one's like 200 miles away. And we all go, yeah, I feel that black hole pretty close to me. It's so I can't really go with Pluto in the first house being only for the early born, early degrees and just 
saying, but more so for the marriages. If a marriage relationship is going to fall apart at all uh, because it doesn't really fit, it's going to happen to the Pluto in the first five degrees over the next three years, okay? But the sense of personal transformation, think of Kafka's you know, metamorphosis, think of the, the <laughs> waking up and being an, a bug. Just think about changing dramatically your identity. I think the dog needs to go to the bathroom. Okay, anything else I wanna say? Pluto here, try your house of God, try your house of foreign lands, try your house of book publishing, try your house of going um, to uh, a deep spiritual place in your life. And Pluto also tr uh, trines the house of romance and the way you connect to, you know, your children in a more powerful and authentic way, and the way you may power up around your muse and your creative endeavors. And for now, that's all I'm going to tell you. We'll get to the more stories next uh, video that I'll do for 2023, where I'll dive into this in a lot more depth as Pluto ingresses in March 23rd into Aquarius for the first time. We'll look at the ingress chart and talk about your sign relative to that. All right, first, but always first, Pisces. If you're in the, in the premiere with me, please hit my like button. Thank you. Please, please, please like me. It helps the channel grow. And if you're not yet subscribed, would you consider that? It also helps my channel grow. When my channel grows, I have a job. Okay, dog, wait. Dog needs to go to the bathroom. Um, should I pause? No, what I need is a good walk. We'll finish up. Don't worry, I won't give you short shrift, Pisces. Pisces, this is what's going on here. Pluto is in a subtle house. If you want to go back and listen to what I just did, it might be helpful. When I talked about the Aquarius, I talked about what it was like to have Pluto in your 12th house. It's a very spiritual transit, could take you off to foreign lands, could have you power up, um, maybe even some area of learning that could become a new career with that ninth house placement. But mostly this is like soul work on steroids. And if you have karmic addiction habits, patterns, clogs, addiction, self undoing, you're getting rid of it. Watch out for attracting powerful people who are secretly your enemies. This happened to me with a particular guru figure. Um, it can happen to you as well. Be cautious around uh, sort of surveying the landscape of people in power that you may encounter that in hindsight may not be on your side. Pluto can bring legacy, inheritance, wealth here. And I didn't say that for the story of me, but I did receive um, some financial uh, wealth during that period, not through inheritance or so, but through stock market investments. Um, so because Pluto is in a um, air trying to the house of legacies, inheritance, spousal support, alimony, palimony, uh, money that can come from money making money, um, 401ks, uh, going into the stock market world, this is an exciting time for you. I did get some really cool ass money at some points during that time. I had Pluto in my 12th house. Um, Pluto here definitely opens up a gateway to your fourth and uh, hey, you just might find yourself buying and selling real estate property. But again, it ties into the legacy inheritances. If it's not your money coming through, like from your family of origin, then it could be from your spouses. But also you may also be looking at spousal money separating assets sometime in what the 20 years I had a long time. So I don't want to worry you Pisces like where you're going, oh no, I just got married. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Um, Pluto in your 12th house. Um, it does have a subtle impact on your earnings. I mean, it, it, here he's in an applying sextile to your earnings house. And you'll find that over the 20 years, your own earnings power grows and grows. That happened for me in my 12th house transit. It'll happen for you. And um, you may acquire more wealthy possessions, more like lustrous and expensive items during the 20 years that follow. And Pluto here is good for deep investigation of your family of origin stuff. Like, is it true that Aunt Sue really uh, just joined the convent because she was in love with God or was she running from her abusive father or whatever? Because there's stuff to do with family secrets to get on earth when Pluto goes through the 12th house and he trines and starts digging up with a big shovel or backhoe fourth house stuff, family of origin, ancestral line, secrets, and even spousal secrets. What has your spouse not told you? Eighth house secrets. Um, secret love affairs and bed pleasures can happen when Pluto goes through the 12th house. I fortunately avoided having any affairs, but 
boy, I, there were many, many times during that transit where temptations arose. So this can happen if you're married and also in Pluto's in the 12th house and you're willing to keep secrets from your spouse and go into the land of secret love affairs. Certainly it's not going to impact your identity or your health directly. Pluto is no longer able to connect with you from this placement. Where Pluto was in the past for you was in your 11th house of good spirit. This is your eldest sibling being really powerful and supportive of you, maybe. This is uh, connections to large groups of belonging with Pluto. Watch out for power mongers and large groups of belonging, including uh, mafia bosses and gurus that are toxic. But on the most part, you know, 2008 to 2023, you were trying to power up within groups of belonging, social movements, groups of influence. Um, you might have been a movement maker, getting involved in making movements happen. I'm thinking of a couple of Pisces for whom this is true. Uh, death to friends, death of friends, death of friendship circles, dramatic changes in the groups that you chose to hang out with, 2008 to 2023. That's all kind of done, one and done. You might have had a windfall here. It could have brought a chunk of money through inheritance or sudden, sudden tax rebates at some point, 2008 onward, or spousal assets coming your way from 2008 and suddenly you're invested in more money. I know one Pisces rising woman for whom that is true. And she now is quite wealthy because of spousal assets going her way. Um, as Pluto is leaving here and not done completely till 2024, the last vestiges of those stories are happening. And once Pluto firmly establishes himself in your 12th house in 2024, November, you can begin to rest easy around the 11th house themes. And in the most part, having Pluto transiting your Capricorn 11th house might've been actually quite good for your experience of your, of your marriage, your experience of your connection to your siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews, trips and travel. When Pluto moves into your 11th, however, he will square the house of nieces, nephews, cousins, siblings, causing difficulties with those characters in your life and the relationship to you. Um, not always, but sometimes. And um, yeah, I think that's it. If you wanted to travel a lot and you weren't going to be like gallivanting in a caravan around the world or, you know, what, you know what I mean? Like doing a lot of short trips and travel. I don't know. Pluto starts to square the third house of shorter travel. Could, could a kibosh on it. And he's also in a square to the house of foreign lands and travel. And that could slow those travels down as well. I traveled a lot when I had Pluto in my 12th house, but I did it for ashram spiritual learning. And in that sense, you could definitely travel, but just leisure, fun, play, fun travel may not be as likely uh, during the 20 years that follow. And I have to say that's kind of true for me, other than taking my daughter away during March break or something, a lot of the travel had to do with transformation and study as opposed to <clears throat> just fun and poolside margaritas, with the exception of my daughter and her best friend, which we love to travel, the Sangria sisters to Mexico. Um, my daughter's an adult, FYI, just in case you're like, traveling with a 12 year old, no, with my adult daughter, who's now staying with me just for a short time here. And I think that's everything. Um, like this is a run up for Pluto in 2040, moving 44, moving into the house of you. I don't know that you wouldn't think of it that way, but you're clearing your karmic closet to power yourself up 2044 and beyond. So if you're listening and you're a 20 year old um, type, you know, person, then this is what I need you to know. I think that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, and stuff like that. Anything else for Pisces? I feel like I rushed through you and I hope I didn't. Did I? I don't think so. Mm. I would say that, you know, with Jupiter moving into your third house, the Taurus house next May and being there for a year, that's going to power up some shorter trips and travel, contrary to what I just said, because he's the Lord of you as well. But for the most part, if you're going to travel, it's not hither, tither, to and fro, unless it's got some deep learning or spiritual involvement involved. And that will be a way of traveling that's different. So I have a Pisces rising sister. Most of her travel has been for leisure and pleasure or to visit family. And she may start traveling to ashrams or spiritual transformation retreats or deeper work, soul work places like that. Alrighty, watch out for toxic gurus. Pluto and the 12th have already been there, done that. Otherwise, Pisces, have an amazing rest of your 2023 
If you're listening in the live, hit the like button. Thank you to anyone who's still here. One Wise Lady, Steve the Jupiterian, if you were here today, Kelly Kay, on and on and on. I know I forget everybody who doesn't have a fancy name like that. I apologize. Uh, and I will see you guys on my next video and have a wonderful holiday season. I'm recording December 18th. My Patreon community gets it ad free ahead of time. If that interests you for five bucks a month, join my Patreon community. Otherwise, you're getting this video with ads uh, sometime before Christmas. Ciao, ciao.